Welcome back. It's now time to recognize our community's unsung heroes. Over the next half hour, you'll meet eight people who are making the Quad Cities area a better place. News 8's Angie Sharp is here with their stories. Angie. Thank you, Jim. These eight nominees were nominated by you, our viewers, and one of them was in Washington, D.C. last night for the National Jefferson Awards Ceremony. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Jefferson Awards special presented by our partner, Genesis Health System. Our eight nominees are the brains behind and the hearts of some incredible acts of public service. Tonight, we celebrate them by sharing their hard work with you in hopes that we can encourage the next round of Jefferson Award winners. The Jefferson Awards program was founded in 1972. It's the country's longest standing and most prestigious celebration of public service. Past winners include Walter Cronkite, Steve Jobs, Paul Newman, and a local name you might recognize, Chad Pergracki. He was honored with the Jefferson Award in 2002. For the second year in a row, WQAD is proud to be part of the selection process. And that started this time last year with our second round of nominees. Leading off, pun intended, is a retired East Moline police captain who is doing everything he can to keep a city sport going and growing. That's the game. That's game. Hustle out to five nights a week. The Merrill Morris Field is full from the fans in the stands to the players in position. Come on, hurry, hurry. This is the Rock Island Girls Softball League. This has been around for 45 years. Two outs. You don't have to come if it's out in front of you. Something like 350 girls every year go through this program. It wouldn't be at all the same without Bill. Look at Bob, look at Bob. Go, Abby. go three, Vanessa, go three. Before the teams arrive to get ready to play, hey, she in her way. There's one man who's already been here for hours, getting the fields ready to play on. The hands of coach Bill DeFreeze shows his hard work, digging down, raking up, doing whatever needs to be done, and some, without fans or fame. A lot of people, even in the league, don't realize how all this gets done. They just show up and the fields are in great shape and have no idea that it was Bill working up here all day. Good job. It's one reason why Bob Swanson, a co-coach, nominated Bill for the Jefferson Award. I said we spent about $200,000 on it. Bill pretty much wrote every grant that they got, uh, was the guy out soliciting talking to people and uh, right. even <laughs> selling Christmas trees to raise money. People start up for different reasons and stay for different reasons. And I'm not, I guess I couldn't tell you what the reason was. You just kind of enjoy doing it and you do it. Our second nominee, you might not know, but you probably remember her son. He was one of our area's fallen soldiers and his mom is honoring him by helping active military and veterans with something as simple as a box. I really had to reinvent myself because I couldn't stay where I was at that point in life after that. That was April 10th, 2009, when five U.S. soldiers were killed by a suicide bomber in Iraq. One of them was Terry Johnson's son, 20-year-old Corporal Jason Pouch. He was just a really sweet, spirited, special boy. His spirit inspired Terry to start Jason's box. Someone gave me an heirloom chest, but I put Jason's mementos in there. And I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, care packages. And mainly because Jared, my other son, was deploying six months after Jason was killed. <laughs> the nonprofit began as a group that puts together customized boxes for troops deployed overseas. Now, more than six years later, they've grown outside the box, expanding their mission to provide services like Patriot Place, which opened in 2014. It's our goal and passion to, to help veterans. So. Run by combat veteran Josh Hadler, Patriot Place is where any veteran can go to receive help, wind down, or even work out. Without Terry, none of this would be possible. It's why Josh is nominating Terry for the Jefferson Award. There's no other veterans organization other than the VA in this area. So to have somebody that dedicates their lives to, to helping veterans, um, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I couldn't have done this without them and without my sons. I mean, we're here today because we have a mission to fulfill and we'll keep going and forging ahead. Two down, six to go, including our finalist who flew to Washington, D.C. this week. But first, the nominee who went from a full-time worker to a full-time giver by creating a house of hope. Plus, she wanted to find a cure for it so that her kids and her grandchildren didn't have to deal with it like she did. 
The nominee who dedicated the last years of her life to stopping what's known as the silent killer. Their story still ahead only on WQAD News 8. Welcome back. Our third nominee is the founder of Timothy's House of Hope in Davenport. It was created in memory of his son who passed away from pneumonia when he was 22 years old. Just a few years later, Jim Swope decided to quit his job and help those in need. Well, yeah, to the world, uh, that's crazy. I use the analogy, you may think I'm a nut, but I'm screwed on the right bolt. Yeah, I think I'm a place to sit. From a full-time worker at Purina to a full-time pastor, Jim dedicated his time to helping the hungry, the hurting, and the homeless. There you go. At Timothy's House of Hope, his team serves up to 5,000 meals a month, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They also offer haircuts, clothing, a food pantry, addiction classes, and church on the street, this street. We don't need another painting on the wall. Or padded pew, uh, let's make a difference in the community, in people's lives. He just loves people, you know, he just, he cares for others. It's why Sue Hutchison is nominating Pastor Jim for the Jefferson Award. I didn't think about it twice. He come to my mind instantly. So I'm honored to, to even be considered for, the, for this award, but uh, I really don't feel like I've done anything that I shouldn't have be, we shouldn't be doing every day anyway. In honor of him, hey, that's, that's, where, that's where he comes in and links up with his dad in this ministry. Timothy's House of Hope. Our fourth nominee is our first ever honorary nominee. Known for her smile, her strength, and her selfless service, she started her own organization to cure cancer before passing away last year. She fought, fought, fought the last four months of her life. So, but that was Angie. You know. Todd DeWill Fond says his wife Angie never let her diagnosis define her. Instead, she told cancer it could kiss her, you know what, 
And that's how CCKMA was created. She wanted to find a cure for it so that her kids and her grandchildren didn't have to deal with it like she did. In April 2008, the wife and mother of two found out she had stage 3C ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is very hard to detect. There's not a screening for that. And for her, it started with lower back pain. That's why they call it the silent killer. But Angie decided to be loud through parties, shows, and games. She told WQAD in April 2015 that the goal of CCKMA is to raise awareness, money, and people's spirits. I think people get down in the dumps a little bit about having cancer, and we just thought, you know, what a great way to get people together. And Three months after this interview, Angie passed away. But in her honor, she's being nominated for the Jefferson Award. It's awesome. It's very well deserved, without a doubt. The past 10 years have been crazy. We've had to live with this, and had I, I grew up only knowing that my mom was sick with cancer, and that has been a very difficult thing for me, but I can say that it's been one of the biggest impacts. An impact measured by the $250,000 raised so far for cancer research and support. It's amazing. I'm so glad I can say that she was my mom. I mean, it's such a cool thing for me, and the fact that she was my mom, it's just, it's awesome. CCKMA just held its ninth annual fundraising event in April, where they raised more than $80,000. And for the first time, they gave out scholarships with the help of Gilda's Club, which was one of Angie's goals. Well, we're halfway done honoring our Jefferson Award nominees. Coming up... It takes just one at a time to really make a difference. And I think that the things that we do for the community and for patients has made such a difference in their lives. The nominee who is using her own near-death experience to inspire others. Plus, one, two, three. <laughs> the nominee making more than just music by bringing a lot of attention to a little town and the nominee who honors our veterans by taking them to the monuments built in their honor. Lisa, Rusty, and Bob's stories still ahead only on WQAD News 8.
Welcome back to our Jefferson Awards special. Our fifth nominee is not a doctor, but every day Lisa Lynn Eveleth is helping people live with chronic illness, something she lives with too. But when you see her, you don't really notice it, and that's kind of the point. Many d diseases such as MS even at the early stages, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes type 1 can be a very invisible disease. Lisa has lupus and 22 years ago it nearly took her life. I mean I just really got to a point where it was wasting away kind of attacking the muscles as well as the nervous system so I had a lot of seizures. The chronic disease put Lisa in a wheelchair at times. She lost weight, her hair, her livelihood. Everyone else is making plans to do things and I felt like I could never make plans. I was so dictated by my disease. That journey turned into a mission. Lisa figured out the right combo of medicine, diet, and exercise to regain her strength and start helping others. In 2013, Live Fit with Lupus was founded. She's very supportive and gets a lot of people involved, makes them feel like we're all a family, we're all in the same boat, and we're fighting together. So they feel that they're empowered because they don't feel like they're facing it alone. For creating that community, Lisa is being nominated for the Jefferson Award. I am so excited for her. I, I can't think of anybody that deserves it more. I'm just so honored and, you know, humbled. I think back and there are definitely times, you know, that was a struggle and that, you know, I didn't really want to be here and it all had a purpose. You know, it really did. Live Fit with Lupus hosts gluten-free cooking classes, healing meetings, and much more. They just had their third annual Hills of the QC race, and coming up in August, they're hosting their third annual golf outing at Palmer Hills. For more information, check out their Facebook page. Next up is Rusty Ruggles, a small town band director who's doing big things for his community. From growing the band program in Mercer County to building a band shelf for Alito and a new track for the high school, his students nominated him for our sixth spot. About 10 years ago, Rusty spearheaded an effort to build the band shell in Alito's Central Park. We put concerts on Thursday nights and have movies and families come out. And he didn't stop there. Our old football coach, when the band shell was done, he looked at me and goes, when are we getting a new track? Years later, he started a new project, one that was a little more out of his comfort zone. I was never in track. I never ran track at all. Um, I don't think I would have been very good at it. Uh, <laughs> But all this dirt and grass transformed with hard work and a lot of help. $1.1 million raised privately, um, and the band shell was about um, 275000 So we were able to raise $1.4 in between those two projects to do some really great things. He just shows the community how much he really cares, and I think that he should get shown why the community cares about him. I guess we want to all say thank you to him, you know, give him just kind of a little thank you to make sure that he knows what he means to us. That thank you is a nomination for the Jefferson Award. It's truly really an honor to be a part of this. One, two, 53, and breathe. <laughs> Our seventh nominee started the honor flight of the Quad Cities in 2009. Since then, the program has taken nearly 40 planes full of veterans to Washington, D.C. This year, things are a little different, but Bob Morrison's efforts will never be forgotten. Well, it's very special. Uh, it really is, and I appreciate it. Um, there's just something about it that is, uh, is, has a good connection. It's a good feeling. They call it the trip of a lifetime. And, and I couldn't understand that. He would come home and he would say, you know, oh, these guys are saying life. And it's like, really? You know, it was, that was hard for me to comprehend. And, um, but over the years, I was able to see where it really was. Similar programs across the country have fizzled, but the honor flight of the Quad Cities keeps going and growing. The veterans are worth everything they're doing. They've earned it, and we need to support them. Today, the tables are turning a little bit. Bob is taking a step back after recently finding out some bad news. November 5th that we received the diagnosis that he has frontotemporal degeneration. Um, some people consider it a form of dementia and some people do not. It's more like a brain injury, so it doesn't necessarily affect his memory, but it affects his ability to um, plan and follow through. His big thing is I want to help people. And so, it's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. And uh, so we've kind of had to refocus and um, life is different now. 
different now, but his accomplishments are still the same. And now he can add another to the list, a nomination for the Jefferson Award. I do appreciate it. I think it's really cool. And uh, it's really nice of you guys to do that kind of thing. There have already been two honor flights in 2016. The next trips are scheduled for this September and October. To fill out an application form, go to honorflightqc.org. One more to go, our final nominee and Jefferson Awards finalist. If we're chosen for this award, it's, it's a Comanche award. It's not our families. We'll introduce you to Cheryl Posh, who's in Washington, D.C. this week. This unsung hero story coming up right after this. Welcome back. Our final nominee and finalist is a woman and her entire community. Cheryl Posh in the small town of Comanche, Iowa, hold a fundraiser for the Muscular Dystrophy Association every year. And this year they hit a major milestone that helped send Cheryl to Washington, D.C. for the National Jefferson Awards Ceremony. It started with a basketball game, then another, then another. And for nearly three decades, there's only been one winner, the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Every year, the small town of Comanche, Iowa, puts up big numbers, tens of thousands of dollars, all in honor of two people. 31 years ago, Jason and Joshua were diagnosed with Becker's muscular dystrophy. Friends of the family wanted to throw a fundraiser, but their parents said no. We said if they'd like to do it, that would be fine, but let's raise the money and give it to MDA. And so, uh, no, put it up here. Comanche MDA basketball tournament was born 27 years ago. And behind it all, behind the scenes, you better go home and get some rest, tea. Was Cheryl Posh. Okay, well, Just the caring, the um, effort that she puts into making this event successful. Take one pass it on. Huge. Just drew me in. Tammy Cooey is one of many who helps organize the fundraiser every year. It is the small hometown feeling and we get that support very much through this event because everyone wants to support this cause and this family especially. It's why Tammy is nominating Cheryl for the Jefferson Award. Cheryl is very much an unsung hero. She doesn't want any of the recognition any, for all of her effort and all of her work. You can't express the overwhelming warmth it gives our family and it helps my sons be 
more open about their condition. It makes them feel like, you know, like they're just like everybody else. And it's, it's, it's just great when the weekend rolls here and you see those same faces come checking in to play and, and, and you hear, yeah, we wouldn't miss it for the world. It's just, it gives us a good feeling that, we're, that we are hopefully doing something right and for a good cause. This March, in its 27th year, they hit a record of more than $43,000 in donations, which helped them break a milestone of half a million dollars total raised for MDA. And days later, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl became our Jefferson Awards finalist. I can't believe that that our story event has done so well. I'm very happy with our community. They've, they've been there for us and it's because of them that it's grown to be what it is. You got to fight for your children and, and that was my drive was to fight for my kids. So, you know, if you can't fight for your kids, you can't expect other people to do it either. So if we can get our word out there that we need to, you know, stop this muscular dystrophy and find a, you know, prevention for it. It's great. I'm, I'll be that voice. <laughs> She is that voice. This week, Cheryl was in Washington, D.C. and got to share her story and cause with the entire country. Here she is with her daughter, Dawn, and her granddaughter, Jenna, at the national ceremonies last night. Cheryl also got to meet Iowa's U.S. Senator Charles Grassley and meet other Jefferson Award finalists. Most importantly, though, she was able to talk about the Comanche MDA fundraiser on a national level. I hope that one day this money that we have raised will help MDA find a research so that Jason and Joshua can benefit from it. But if not them, then it will help other families one day. And if in the meantime, I can only give my sons a few days to forget about being confined to their wheelchairs and know that they are surrounded by people who care about them, then I have succeeded. Thank you. Congratulations to Cheryl and to all of our Jefferson Award nominees, an incredible group of people doing incredible things in our community. We're getting ready for round three of our Jefferson Award nominees. If you know an unsung hero, fill out an application at WQAD.com. Just type Jefferson Awards in the search box. Thanks again to our presenting partner, Genesis, to photographer Anthony Panacucci for putting this special together. For all those behind the scenes, including director Bruce Appa, and thanks to you for helping us honor these nominees and tell their stories. Have a great night.